Welcome to the John Carson Victory Tour, a.k.a. the Game Informer Show, a weekly video game podcast releasing every Thursday. I am your host, Alex Stadnick, and as always, I am honored to be joined by the illustrious Alex Van Aken. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for having me, Alex. It's lovely to be here today. It is a beautiful day indeed. Uh, Join us each week alongside a rotating cast of GI editors and special guests from around the industry as we bring you the latest news, reviews, and big man swag your eyes and ears can handle. Oh boy, do we have a good one for you this week. News for the week is Alex Van Aken got a tattoo. I did. Let's get it out of the way, everybody. I got... That's not a good way to show this (laughs) off. No. (laughs) It looks very good. Yeah, go check out his Twitter. Um, But no, actually, we uh, this week we are talking about the Nintendo Direct, uh, maybe one of the best Nintendo Directs. Um, We are talking about Lost Ark, and we are talking about Sifu. But first, let's introduce the panel panelist. I guess (laughs) King of Late Night. You know him. You love him. John Carson. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm a whole couch full of guests. Uh, (laughs) I'm an entire panel. What's up, buddy? Uh, Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks is that a multiple personality situation or I, yeah yeah i mean sometimes okay. I'm, sometimes i'm tired sometimes i'm excited oh okay uh I but i i think I've, i'm gonna fill out a lot of excitement for the things that we're gonna be talking about with this nintendo direct nice you got, you got that chris farley on like uh letterman uh energy going right now he's just <laughs> diving through the crowds you know what i'm saying um but anyways, so uh, we're going to jump into the news straight away here. Uh, Nintendo had themselves a little direct, and boy, did it deliver for all you 90s RPG sickos out there. You got your wish. Um, so how we're going to structure this is I'm going to read a list of everything that was announced. We're just going to go through it, bang, 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 bang. And then we'll start talking about what we actually uh, liked, you know, what we did into that kind of stuff. So um, kicking things off, I'm just going to go down the list. So we got Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes uh, for, excuse me, June 24th release date. Uh, Advance Wars got a release date for April 8th, which is very exciting. Uh, A surprise, No Man's Sky, summer 2022. Looking at you, Mr. Van Aken. Yep. Um, And then Alex lost his mind, and so did I. Uh, Mario (laughs) Strikers Battle League. Yeah. Uh, It was so exciting that we ended up uh, (laughs) turning the stream off, apparently. My internet just stopped working because we were so excited. Yeah, the whole thing. Um, So then um, we got Splatoon 3 for summer 2022, which we can talk about. I don't know if they had confirmed summer yet. Um, I don't think they did, no. So So that's good. We're inching closer. We're uh, we we got Front Mission first remake and uh, for summer 2022, but then also Front Mission two remake for the future. Hell so yeah, yeah. Um, Disney Speedstorm for summer 2022, which looks like a decent kart racer. Yeah, yeah. Hey. The, we the were convinced uh, there wouldn't be any uh, any other kart racers because of this. I was mm-hmm. like, what marketing person would want to? have the same stream as mario kart well disney apparently so um moving speaking of disney we got star wars the force unleashed for april 20th game uh looks real bad but worse than i remember it looking it's, but it's that game is so the fun me version i think they mentioned like the yeah, Wii motion the control Wii. so yep. um i don't think that's the good one <laughs> it is good <laughs> like i do like that game the Wii yeah. version is probably not the yeah. way to play that so um we also got the Assassin's Creed SEO collection for February 17th. That is very soon. Yes. Um, some of my favorite AC games are in that collection. Uh, S- SD Gundam Battle, Alliance for 2022. Uh, Chrono Cross, which I know we will get to, is getting a remake uh, for April 7th very soon. Uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, full on mouth mode, mouthful oh, mode. Just- creepy <laughs> you know what <laughs> trying to remember all of the jrpgs announced during this show call that mouthful mode you know i'm just saying <laughs> right there tweet it baby um all right MLB, mlb the show for april 5th um which first time that game is coming to switch which is exciting um king's kingdom hearts uh integral masterpiece the whole collection of the uh sorry wait games. can i redo my joke can i redo my joke yeah yeah trying to it. remember all of the kingdom heart game titles call that mouthful mode <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you. tweet it um Kelowna fantasy reverie series which john is very How dare you for. not know what klonoa is klonoa is so good i'm a simple man who likes the simple shooters you know that's what i got for you it is uh, a shooter kind of uh okay. 
not really. I don't. I don't know what Klonoa is. I know <laughs> one guy who's really passionate about it. That's the only reason I know what it is. Yeah, he's right. Oh, there. I know two people then. <laughs> there you go. And they're Love. both. They both live in Minnesota. Oh, wow! <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. Um, Portal Companion Collection for 2022, dude. Uh, oh, let's get it. We'll get into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, live a life or live alive. Live yeah. alive. Live alive. Um, July 2022, or excuse me, July 22nd, 2022. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, April 29th, 2022. Um, Taiko no Tatsuji? Uh, the you Roman game. Yeah, right I was there. close. You're I was right like there. 80% of the way. Um, for this year, Triangle Strategy is getting a new demo uh, starting today or yesterday, if you're listening to this. Um, Cuphead DLC is coming in June. Um, Metroid is getting uh, two uh updates for difficulty and for a boss rush mode uh first one is today or yesterday uh earthbound and earthbound beginnings Mm. on nintendo switch online and that's coming today or it's you're already playing it you're literally listening to this podcast and playing the game right now um and a couple of the last quick hitters uh zombie army 4 comes april 26th get so fuminen uh is out now which is nuts what? i want to i want to get to that one sure uh, demon slayer june 10th lego brawls june 2022 two point campus shout out to mr van aken um may 17th mario kart 8 deluxe booster course pass on march 18th and then rounding it out the big uh, announcement for the show is xenoblade chronicles 3 not just this this amorphous blob in the ether right uh, September 2022 uh, is the the date for that right now. So that's going to be a big part of Nintendo's fall plans, I think. So, gentlemen, am I wrong to say this is one of the best directs we've had? Like top tier for sure. I don't think it's it at has... least B tier. B tier. Yeah, it, okay. it doesn't at have, least it doesn't have the highest highs of like a an E3 direct, but like start to finish. Yeah, like solid. there wasn't anything where I'm like, nah, like. What what is this doing here? Like it all made it all made sense. Like it, we're starting to see the year kind the of low parts were quick, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Like wasn't... all right, come on, let's keep going. There wasn't yeah. a ten minute demo of Gundam SD, even though I love Gundam. Uh, but there we didn't need a... ten minutes oh, of it. Yeah, yeah. Need it. yeah. Um, let's start with our our NV all Fire Emblem fans. Yeah. Um, are you excited for a Masu version of it? A, a Muso? Uh, Muso, excuse me. They, yeah. So, so they've they've had these already. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really too excited about about Three Hopes, but I I think it's cool for people who are fans of uh, Three Three King, not Three Kingdoms, Three Houses, Three, three houses. houses. Yeah, there's too many threes, too many <laughs> too many tactical things with three in their name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but being able to go back to the three houses world. I think will be exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Koei Tecmo has been doing that with like Hyrule Warriors and going back to memorable places in the Zelda franchise. So mm-hmm. do it again for uh, Fire Emblem. Seems cool. I'm curious what the seal, the, the ceiling is for Nintendo now, just like doing all their franchises as, as those type of games. So like Mario Musou, you know, Marso, Mario Musou, sure. kind of rolls off the tongue. Sure, just Mario up, Musou almost. three. Yeah, <laughs> Super Mo- Super Mario Musou. Yeah, yeah it does yeah. roll off the tongue. Advance Wars coming in in April is exciting. Uh, we're both uh, we were excited about that on the stream, yeah. John. I think you're excited for that as well. Very right? excited. Yep. Let's. Uh, I they they oh. added voices to it, so that's cool. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, I know Alex is excited for No Man's Sky, but that's kind of self-explanatory. Let's get into Mario Strikers because mm-hmm. I think this was yeah. the first oh snap moment of the the stream. Um, for those who don't know, Mario Strikers is uh, the the soccer uh, sports game for Mario, right? We have tennis, mm-hmm. we have golf, uh, which have each gotten treatment over the last uh, two or three years to uh, middling success, right? Some some highs, some lows there. But holy God, does uh, Battle League look amazing? It, if y'all never played it, it is. It it has moments of like strategy there, that you just wouldn't like, expect. Yeah, yeah. There are moments of like duels, like soccer duels of sorts. Like it's so aggressive. It is so. There's so much sabotage involved. And Mario Strikers, like I'm the guy who like I make that thing look like rugby. Like you cannot <laughs> yeah. escape me because I will tackle you. 
I will give my teammate the ball and we're going to score. I, yeah. Mario I can't Blitz. wait. And I remember, I remember there being some broken characters back in the day on GameCube, on the GameCube version, right? So I'm curious <laughs> to see what they do balancing wise for this. Cause I think it was, I want to say Diddy Kong was like ridiculously overpowered in that game, but maybe I was just bad at it. Regardless, um, I loved that. And that was like, that was the, the game cube version of strikers was like a make or break for our friendship, uh, who I'd play with because we just got heated. It got so competitive and we were throwing things. Great. It was a whole thing. So. That was double dash for me, my friends. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you ever play Sega soccer slam? Mm-mm. No, that was also I've, a game. I've heard it's game. very good. Yeah. I, I, there was a couple of year period where we had Mario strikers and Sega Soccer Slam. And then more, when the world needed the most, they disappeared. Disappeared. <laughs> See, I, was always, I was always a Mario Tennis guy. Tennis and golf yeah. were, were, were my two Mario mm-hmm. sports games. Are you looking forward to, to oh, I mean, Hey, if, if when we're all going to be in the office together, we're going to we're going to strike some some Mario strikers. each other. We're going to we're going to yeah. slam it <laughs> yeah. for days on end. Let's yeah, go. that is exciting. It is June 10th. So like now I feel like this is the first stream of the year to really like start filling out what is past these these monumental months of, of February and, and yeah. March. So, yeah, um, which is very exciting. Uh, do we want to talk about Splatoon 3? Uh, the co-op mode that they showed off it was more salmon run um yeah. that, that I, music I don't was think... questionable if you uh. played salmon run and splatoon 2 they made some cool changes um mm-hmm. look like some of the way that you like move the eggs and stuff is a bit quicker mm-hmm. um there was a new salmon head they showed off at the end but i think i just want to see more from the single player and multiplayer um mm-hmm. I think Salmon Run will be great, but yeah, I, I think it's cool that it's back. I seems hope like they that was it, what they. It seems weird they led with that. Yeah, I I hope they make it easier to access for people because I think that was that was like one of the big criticisms of Salmon Run before was like you needed a group of four. Um, it was only available at certain times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so like, hopefully they they make it so you can. I, I don't know about the, the group size now that I think about it, but like I, I feel like it was only available at, at specific times, like like most Splatoon stuff, like things things are on a on a time gate and you have to hit up those those playlists at, at specific times a day. So they, they can funnel the whole community into each mode. So that yeah. People yeah. Have people to play with. Yeah. I would imagine this is well, because now so now um, Mario Strikers is the June game, right? Mm-hmm. I would imagine maybe that's July or August. Yeah. Um, you know, April could be, but they said summer. So I feel like summer would oh, be. Oh, like sorry. No, yeah, you're right. June yeah. to like August, I feel like. And I feel like August would be. Well, with climate change, it's going to feel like <laughs> summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In April. Yeah, yeah, we're getting wet and wild in February. <laughs> we're we're going to get three feet of snow in April again. Guaranteed. Yeah. Don't even don't even say that. Anyways, um, let's go to Chrono Cross next. Mm-hmm. So. I think for me, I've always been interested in Chrono Trigger coming to Switch, but I know there is a whole section of the world that says, leave your, your Chrono Trigger, give me the Chrono Cross. And I think, John, you're one amongst them. So uh, Chrono Cross is the game that I mostly missed on, on the PlayStation. My, my friend had it. I played like the beginning a, a couple of times. But it's, it's a game that really hasn't been re-released outside of the PlayStation release. It's been on like PlayStation Classics, on Vita, um, and PlayStation 3. But I think that's really the only other time that it's been available. So having uh, an HD remastered version coming up on Switch, I'm sure it's going to be elsewhere, too. I can't see it not being elsewhere um, in, the, in the way that they've done Final Fantasy 7, 8 and 9. Um, I think it's it's going to be a, a cool remaster to have and uh, something to, to try out. Like, I, I know a lot of people are really into Chrono Cross. Um, and I, I'm very, very happy for those people who get to play it again. Uh, and I'm happy for myself who gets to play it for the first time, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. It's um, a turn-based RPG, right? It is, yeah. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Switch is exceedingly the home of that. Uh, Alex, yes. one word answer. Are you excited for this? Yes or no? I'm excited for others. Okay. Gotcha. Cool, cool. Um, let's move down to speaking of things I know Alex is excited about. Man. Every time we see that freaking Kirby game, it just looks better and better. Oh, it? dude. Yeah. Kirby. Holy uh, Lord. We got mouthful mode. <laughs> Wait, we I'm already sure talked about that. 
we uh, we did in Kingdom Hearts and, and whatnot. Yeah, I already um, made that joke. Yeah, <laughs> it does uh, look good though. Yeah, but uh, to explain what mouthful mode is, it's yeah. Kirby is just you know he's got a big mouth, but apparently not big enough for a car. So it's no. just <laughs> this whole section of the game now, right, where you are you're sucking up uh, like vehicles or <laughs> a traffic machines. cone or a vending there yeah. was yeah at one point he had a, like a scissor lift and he was like <laughs> raising it up and down to get higher um yeah it was it, it, his, his body's just stretching around it so like when he's over the car his mouth is basically lengthwise on the car yeah but he um, doesn't swallow the wheels, he right? So he's just it. driving no. around. No, it's like this weird body horror. Like they're stretching <laughs> this curvy skin over these different instruments. Uh, yeah, it's it's so curvy. good. Yeah, I like I think, it. I do think what's lost in that announcement, though, is um, is the also the upgrades to uh, Kirby's powers, right? Oh so, yeah. So we've talked a lot about you know what we want from Kirby going forward, mm. right? And I think the worry was that this was just going to be 3D Kirby, but still a lot of the same abilities, like the sword that you've used forever or the fireballs you've used forever, right? Since the you know for 20 years, 30 years, whatever. That is even getting an upgrade now. So not only are we getting new abilities, we're getting this car sicko mode from Kirby. We're also getting the ability to level up certain abilities at mm -hmm. the the hub town which i think is incredible like they showed dragon kirby flying around the environment spitting fire and just like terrorizing the land and every time i see this game i'm just like i need this even more and i'm so happy that we don't have that long to wait for it so it's awesome yeah. i cannot wait yeah this is this is it just keeps oh i i can't wait especially play that on the oled oh let's Ooh. go Mwah. that's gonna look so good um John, you are unironically excited for Klonoa. Yeah. Right? Uh, so yeah. I think I think like m my first or second episode of being on the GI show might have been when when Ben was hosting. There's okay. a question that came in about like favorite remakes or remasters, and I said the Cl the Klonoa one remake that was on uh, that's on the Wii. That's coming to the Switch now, um, and I'm super pumped to to play it again. And it's coming with Klonoa, Klonoa two as well. Um, which I think is also a remake. I'm not sure if they just cleaned up the graphics of Klonoa 2 or if it's a mm -hmm. whole new thing like Klonoa 1 was. But okay. yeah, super pumped to uh, uh, to play it again and super pumped to uh, make you guys watch me play it. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to help with those streams. No, I'm just kidding. That, uh, it. it definitely looked interesting. Um, do you you said it's from the Wii or the Wii U? Uh, from the Wii. Okay, gotcha. So, oh, but but it's just like a it's a it's a platformer. It's a mm -hmm. PlayStation era platformer. Yeah, looked uh, interesting. So, yeah. Cool. Um, I'm happy for you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's talk about ooh, let's talk about Portal real quick. Uh, the companion collection, Portal One and Two. Which Alex, you said on stream you haven't played Portal Two. No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I've I've been eager to play Portal Two for a while, and uh, I know that's everybody's favorite. I love Portal One. That game's awesome. I I I played it originally in the orange box. Really loved it. I never beat it. So last year, Whoa. two years ago, I went back and beat it and played through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what an awesome game! I love that game so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited to play Portal Two now. And I'm maybe I'm, so happy I'm not going to play you. it on Switch or play it on the Steam Deck. One Ooh, of the two. Okay. Regardless, I think Portal Two has come is is getting played this year. Portal 20. 2 is one of those games that I wish I could erase everything from my memory and, and play it again. So yeah. I'm I'm super happy that you get to have a first experience at that. I'm yeah. excited. Yes. Yeah, the writing in that is so good. If if you know if you do play it on Switch, be sure to throw those headphones on and, and tune out the rest of the world because the story in that game is is exceptional or the writing in that game is exceptional. And Steven Merchant is hilarious. So um I think I'm excited for that because I've played it and like I wasn't going to play. I wasn't going to sit down on my Xbox and replay Portal. You know, I wasn't going to, you know, uh, sit at my PC and play it. So, but I feel like if I can just like turn it on, do a few puzzles before bed and then, you know, go to sleep, that seems perfect for me. So I'm excited yeah. for that. Um, I w uh, live Alive, I, I would like to, it, it looks fantastic. I read a Twitter thread from Per Schneider from IGN talked about the importance of this game it sounds nutty it sounds like a bunch of rpgs just rolled into one um and i'm a sucker for 2d hd um and so this seems it's, it's in my wheelhouse yeah. um do you, neither of you know anything about the the game outside of that right 
no, I, I've heard of it before. That's the extent that I know. And I kind of want to go in dark now. Like, yeah. just, Alex, just see this, this whole thing. I'm going to put you on blast, Alex. Ooh, oh, oh. So you're going to play this game, right? I would like to. Yeah. Are you going to beat it? Probably not. Wait, did you beat Octopath Traveler? Am I thinking? Yeah, bro. No, dude. I put 90 hours. I'm thinking about somebody else. Never mind. (laughs) 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 He played himself. Bro, I put 90 hours into that game because I didn't have internet for three months. Uh, I'm I'm thinking of myself. I didn't finish that game. I didn't either. (laughs) And I always say I love these HD looks. I never played that. Never mind. I'm putting myself on blast. You played yourself. Congratulations. We have the same name. I get confused. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) We're we're becoming one. Yeah. Um, so that looks interesting. I'm excited mm-hmm. to, I am actually excited to, to see more from that. So, um, and I don't have to wait too long cause that's in July. Nintendo switch sports is one that I don't think any of us saw coming. At least I did it. Finally, so, a system no. seller. <laughs> Finally, I'll sell a few of these switches. Yeah. I think, I'm excited for this. Yeah. You know, they're hitting on some of the modes that made Wii sports iconic, right. With, with bowling. Um, some of it is not like, I was surprised no golf or baseball at the start, but they are adding like soccer and badminton and volleyball, which, Mm -hmm. uh, looks fun. You know, I'm excited. I think I'm excited to play those games without the constraints of like the Wii. And it's like, mostly good motion controls whereas the switch it's like pretty one-to-one at, yeah. at this point um so that's exciting to me and and they said they are going to add golf so there's potential here to continue to bolster that that library right and as nintendo showing and we'll talk about it in a minute they are willing to put meaningful dlc out there so the support for this one could be could be interesting i don't know any takes from you gents before we move on I am ready to to rediscover the world of Wii Sports uh, yeah. on the Switch and yeah. new new mode. I'm. It's been a minute since I've had that family game that everybody loves and the world is talking about. And I hope that we can hit that with with Nintendo Switch Sports. Yeah, maybe we'll a get, little bit. Yeah, we'll get Kayla over. We'll get you know. We'll get Jess playing it. It'll be a, it'll be a good yeah. time. Yeah, I think yeah. it's been a, it's been a while since we've seen a game that justifies the. Uh, the motion controls on yeah. the switch so it, it's cool to have it just for that uh, plus just the ca- the casual appeal bring it to family functions and whatnot play some sports mm-hmm. yep same thing as the Wii, just easier yeah uh i want to hit on three more but john i gotta give you yeah. your time in the sun here oh. uh earthbound and earthbound beginnings finally oh. coming to switch this game i'll yeah, just pop that. it into the super nintendo oh uh, yeah you're set yeah you know. uh this is super exciting uh i Earthbound itself has been on a, a few different Nintendo platforms now. Um, it was on the Super Nintendo Classic. It's on the 3DS, the Wii U. It's great that it's on Switch. Love the game. It's uh, my go-to uh, when people ask me what my favorite game of all time is. Um, so play play that Earthbound and, and play Earthbound Beginnings as well. Uh, okay. So hopefully uh, we don't need to perform any blood sacrifices for Mother 3 sometime mm. in the future. I mean, do you think genuinely like uh, we can go quick through this, but do you think like if Nintendo sees enough people playing Earthbound on Switch Online that Mother 3 has a shot or do you not dare to dream? It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's true. So, um, I mean, every day that goes by, we're a little bit closer to the possibility of it happening and hopefully them bringing these and like making it a big deal like these could have come to the Switch Online service. Back when it released um Mm -hmm. back when it was announced and uh they're making a big deal of it now coming together and hopefully that is a sign um i'd I'd like to think it is at least um yeah mother three mother three has some uh uh has some compatibility issues i'd say with with modern consoles uh there is a rhythm mechanic um and playing on like newer tvs and stuff there is a little bit of a delay uh for Hmm. input um so i could see some of that being an issue for bringing it to newer consoles and maybe having to translate it somehow gotcha uh maybe that's a problem but maybe i mean maybe there's a remake in that you know what i mean yeah yeah absolutely so so. hopefully that's coming yeah Uh, but but play these these are great i am genuinely specifically yeah i am genuinely excited i was looking for something on my switch outside of uh, pokemon legends so um i'm here for it alex are you gonna play it first time no nope. okay that's okay we'll Not move on again happy for other people cool. yeah 
for sure. Um, one of the bigger announcements, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass coming out March 18th. This is 48 tracks, people. This is it's, They're literally doing the Smash thing where the gang is all here. They're going to do, I think they said, packs of eight for the next basically year and a half. They said yeah. they'll yeah. stop in 2023. Yeah. Uh, also, anyone hoping for Mario Kart 9 uh, will see you in half a decade because that is not coming anytime soon. Um, are you? I can't wait for this. I'm excited. I'm genuinely yeah, I, excited. You know, there was some some solid omissions from Mario Kart uh, when that f- game first came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're filling that now. It would seem. Uh, John, are you you excited for this, or are you oh. hoping for Mario Kart 9? No, I'm super pumped about this. Like Mario Kart 8 is my second favorite Mario Kart ever. Um, next to Double Dash, the the goat. Um, but having close to fifty more tracks to play over the next year and a half, that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Like that game is near perfection already, and just adding more stuff to this and having it as part of the expansion pack, perfect. Like I don't yeah. have to pay anything extra. I've got Mario Kart Eight already. I just get to enjoy this mm-hmm. from here on out. So yeah, super I'm, pumped. I think it's hard. It's a hard sell for Nintendo, right? When I looked it up after stream 43 million so there's 43 million uh, copies of mario kart sold and there's just over a hundred million switches out there so you're looking at an install base of almost 40 percent already own you know what i mean yeah. like 40 percent of yeah. switch owners own mario kart that's crazy you can't ignore that and i feel like this is just like a boost in value proposition for that so um, i hope this I'm is the excited. start of other popular switch games that are going to start getting expansion passes attached to the expansion pack um throw some more odyssey levels out there i mean that's been the rumor for a while right that that people have thought that mario odyssey was going to get some sort of dlc because breath of the wild got some dlc right they figured why not odyssey and uh i mean it opens the door right like that game is what four years old at this point three years old something like that uh, older than odyssey. yeah so like i mean never say never i i want that's one where I want Odyssey 2, personally, but like... Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. But, yeah. but if, if they need to stem the tide a little bit while they're, while they're building out their next big Mario game, like, sure. Yeah. And, and then finally, the big closer, which unfortunately was on Alex and I. I apologize for anyone looking for the oh snap moment there. But a lot of people are excited. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, September... Mm-hmm. John, you uh, at least told me you were a Xenoblade uh, fan. What yeah. is exciting about this? Why Why are you pumped? Uh, so there's, I mean, I, I really like Monoliths, Monoliths games um, ever since like Xenosaga. Um, so uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, the, the remaster that came out, uh, was it last year? or two years ago was really was really cool um i like xenoblade chronicles 2 quite a bit really like xenoblade xenoblade chronicles x and i know that's what the game that a lot of people thought this was gonna be and uh, what a lot of people wished it was because that's like one of the few wii u games that hasn't made it to the switch yet Mm. um but it's it's cool to see a uh, just a full-on sequel to xenoblade chronicles i i guess it's a sequel to one and two um I was looking at the eShop page and it says that it's built on the futures of both one and two. So um, I have, I don't think we have time to get into the <laughs> the storyline of that. Cause we're, Oh, we're no. Like, how does that even make sense? I don't know. I don't cause know. they're not cause the, okay. Yeah. I will save that for, yeah, we'll, the, we'll save the, for another time. For another it time. is very yeah. exciting and it's, it's more Xenoblade, how the combat's going to uh, evolve from what we saw in one and two. Mm hmm. Didn't really show it in there, but I'm sure we'll get a 45 minute direct on it in like June. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're kind of getting a a taste of what the E3 uh, direct is already going to shape up to look like, too, which I think is exciting. So um, quickly, is there anything you wished was here today? I know people were hoping for Breath of the Wild, a couple of the things. Yeah. yeah. Zelda 2 would have been cool, even just like an update. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... I mean, this Odyssey too. Yeah, there's there's several, but no, I was I was pretty happy. There there's some that they save for like E3 time, and that that's usually yeah. Zelda. It's usually Mario. Uh, now's the time of time of year where we where we usually get the sports title, where we get the JRPG uh, yeah announcements, which um, I think is is great, and we could start kind of predicting what Nintendo is gonna 
be showing for the rest of the year. Like, we're not going to get any Pokemon announcements for for another month or so, if anything, uh, mm-hmm. for the year. But yeah, I don't think we're going to see Mario or Zelda for a, a few more months, which I wish that they were here. Um, but mm. I'm super <laughs> hyped for everything that that was in this direct today. So, yeah, I I think I uh, I'm always hoping that we see something like Metroid Prime remakes. Right. I, mm-hmm. I would love for that. I was, you know, I'm always hoping for Sports Story. I'm always hoping for Wind Waker yeah. and, and Twilight Princess. Right. But like. I mean, that's if that's the E3 for for, you know, or excuse me, the direct for E3, like, you know, we're eating good. And I really think Nintendo, we talk a lot about the dominance of Sony and Xbox, right? But Nintendo has a shot to if they can hit and if Breath of the Wild is every or is this year from like August to December, they could have a title every month that is like not to be ignored depending on when Splatoon like because Splatoon could be August, you know, Xenoblade could be September, you know. Uh, Breath of the Wild could be October, November. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's Bayonetta. plenty of spots. Bayonetta, right? We don't know like, anything about. Like, they, yeah, they they recently just showed the, their slate of games that are supposed to be coming out this year. In what, what I'm guessing is an, an assumed timeline, and like Bayonetta was near the end. Breath of mm-hmm. the Wild was still in there. Yep. Um. So th- while they don't have dates, it looks like they they kind of have places pegged throughout the year for for these big releases. For sure. Yeah, it's it's I think it's one of their better directs. I think the the pacing was phenomenal and uh I am so excited for the future of my Switch. So, that's all you can ask for, right? So, yeah. we are going to take a quick break and you know what? Let's let's have some fun. Let's get Reeves in here. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah let's get oh, Reeves. Sure. Yeah. Let's we'll do right it. There. Welcome back to the Game Informer show. Wow. That direct. Can you believe it? I Man. I can't either. Yeah, there were some wild announcements some crazy things all those games now on switch online you better believe it folks let's welcome in either our new cast or the cast that has already been with us <laughs> we have the street comedian ben reeves hello sir hello Mwah. <laughs> Mwah, indeed and then the king of late night john carson hello sir hello smooches to all of you out there <laughs> <laughs> that's how we're gonna greet our our, our lovely chat and viewers yeah. now uh topic of the week uh we're gonna kick this this off with our sifu review impressions which uh ben had the privilege of reviewing for us and uh ben you had some mixed thoughts on it if i remember correctly yeah a little mixed i think people were pretty excited about this game and and uh i was too i you know just to jump not bury the lead 7.25 is what i ended up giving it so it's not a terrible score but it's definitely not what i it's interesting to look at the metacritics kind of all over the board there's some people who are giving it nines and there's other people who are lower than me but i think i'm probably a little bit lower than the median but did you have you guys played it at all yet yes yeah, yeah. Yep. i think it starts off really strong that like opening intro level is really cool mm-hmm. you're you're playing as these characters who come in and, and murder a guy basically uh how cool does that sound right <laughs> yeah. Love murder. Yeah. and you are so overpowered too in that first area mm-hmm. it's yeah like, oh okay yeah i am like clearly the threat here yeah it does a good job of setting up why that game is cool and what's cool about the game which is the combat it just feels really good really impactful action very reminiscent of a fighting game so if you're a fighting game player or you're a fan of fighting games you might feel kind of at home here even though it's it looks a little bit more like a 3d brawler it definitely plays with some intentionality you have to have some intention in all of your attacks there's combos there's you know you got to be aware of characters around you if people are coming up from behind you got to be aware kind of position yourself correctly among other people so that's that's really cool about it. That's the part I liked the most about the game. Uh, the further in the game you get, though, it definitely it it definitely begins to uh, put pressure on the player to perform extremely extremely well. And I'm not against hard games by any stretch of the imagination. I you know played Bloodborne and loved it. I played tons of other hard games. But uh, one thing I don't like about games that are hard sometimes is having to replay areas over and over again and that's something that i think sifu kind of forces you to do for a couple of reasons one of which being the way you level up Uh, you know you get locked well maybe we should back up and explain just you play the game if somebody's new to this game and Mm -hmm. hasn't heard of sifu as you play the game you age so every time you die you age a 
one year. Yep. It's a really cool mechanic, actually. I like this mechanic as well. Uh, and then every time you die, you also gain a, a death counter. So the second time you die, you'll age two years because your death counter went up. If that yep. makes yeah. Sense. Becomes mm. a multiplier for yeah. your punishments. <laughs> so you start off, you're aging pretty slowly. You go through your 20s pretty slowly. But, you know, by the time you have a, a five on your death counter, you know, the decades are flying by, you know. Yeah. By the time you're in yeah. your 60s, like you spend hardly any time there for real. There and are ways to turn your death counter down too. So depending on which get like you, you can, you got to manage that pretty well, but so it's yeah, a cool there system. Are shrines you can find to like reset that death counter. And right. there's certain enemies you take down that if you do it yeah. cleanly, I think you, you get like a, you get one down or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. So, so that's neat. I actually like that system, but there's other things that they link to that that are a little frustrating in my mind. So there's the way you progress or level up. Certain skills get locked out from you being able to access them or upgrade them after you age to a certain point. So by the time you're in your 30s, there's some skills you can't access. But you can upgrade them permanently if you spend like five times the amount of experience on them that you did to unlock them, if that makes sense. So if you spend enough experience on it, you can unlock it permanently. But that just means that you have to do that before you're 30, right? So you have mm -hmm. to, in my case, I had to go and grind the first two levels a couple of times. Well, more than a couple of times, several times to unlock the skills that I felt were really important. And there are some skills that are actually really important. For example, there's the interact within the environment skill, which lets you kick objects on the ground, like stools mm -hmm. or chairs or stuff at people. It's actually a really cool skill, something that I think if you're playing this game, you should beeline it to that skill and try to unlock that pretty quickly because it's actually really helpful as well so that's kind of annoying and then there's just uh i don't know you have to play really well so after you finish the first level you go into the second level with whatever age you were so if yeah in the first level, so then you're starting the second level in your 40s mm -hmm. But, the, you know, you're not going to beat the game at that pace. So you have to yeah. go back and replay the first level trying to get a younger age oh, okay. to start into the, mm -hmm. the second yeah, level. Like, that's cool. So if you get to, like, the last level and you're like, I just don't have enough years left to actually make it through and get the boss, you're like, I got to go all the way back to the beginning and, like, redo it to find some extra years somewhere in there. And yep. I just, I don't know, that system kind of graded against me the further in I got in the game. Yeah, it, it's kind of like take the the whole reason that souls is satisfying is number one the difficulty but also like when you beat that challenge you are done with it and oftentimes you're rewarded like you know in bloodborne you get like oh you might not have access to buy like bolt paper or fire paper now because you got this new metal from or this new badge from beating this really tough boss and sifu it's just kind of like okay your reward is now you get to go to the next level but also, you might have to yeah. come back later and beat the same boss, but yeah. better. Are, and it's just like, that's not that fun. Are like, there like different said. paths you can take during, like, through There are shortcuts or... you can unlock. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is definitely, like, mm -hmm. um, you want to find those keys and, or whatever you need, the, key, the keypad codes. And uh, some doors, like, aren't necessarily shortcuts, but there's something behind them that you might want to figure out. Um, and, and you might not, might not find that shortcut until the third mission. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's all just, it's, yeah, it's kind of, there are ways to get through it though. Yeah. Like John. Cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would, I would say if you're just starting with it, stick with it, maybe it'll click with you, but it is a game. If you're, I don't know if, if any of this sounds like it's a turnoff to you, it probably will be a turnoff once you play it. But there's so there's so much to like about this game. I, I hope maybe they could like tweak the structure of it with an update or something. Just let yeah. you start each level at, at I, 20 or something. I really like that when you are younger, you have more health, but you, your hits do less damage. Yeah. And as, as you get older, your hits do a lot more damage, but your health is so tiny. And you said... And your speed goes down. And your speed goes down, yeah. yeah. Reeves, like you were talking about how like you barely get to spend any time in your 50s and 60s and by the time you hit your 70s like you're 
pretty much dead. Mm-hmm. You, have to re- you have to. You have <laughs> to. Pretty restart. morbid. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. Sorry, I do grandpa. wish, like, yeah. I do wish there are more ways to spend more time in the in those ages because I feel like that's where some strategy could develop. Like, oh, I actually really prefer the play style uh, of my fifties and sixties because of that additional, you know, those hits. I wish that there was a way to like kind of like target like okay i'm gonna like intentionally like feed uh some death so i can like get to 50s and 60s and that's like my sweet spot but you don't ever really get to make that decision because i'm by the time you get to do your 50s and 60s you're like i just you're it's like panic like you're like i just have to survive now like i don't get to think about strategy because the yeah. hits are so uh unforgiving and i'm like on my deathbed essentially and There's i wish a- there was a better way to manage your ability to take years off the death counter so that mm-hmm. went back to one. Because as we said, there are the shrines you can use, but the shrines are such a precious resource because there's so many things you can unlock there. You, know, you can upgrade weapon skills. You can upgrade your your health, your, your stamina, which is also a, a really important resource. So I, f- I felt like I kind of never really wanted to use it on the death counter. There were times I did yeah, just because it felt necessary, but it was yeah. like kind of disappointing whenever I had to do that because there's so many other things that I would have preferred to spend that on. So I don't know, just maybe some other systems around managing that death counter would be, would have been helpful. For sure. I, I think I, I am a victim of my own expectations on this game and I'm in a very unique position where I got to preview Sifu and the preview was in a vacuum and it was only the club level, which is the second level of the game. And with that combat system and some of the, the things that were already unlocked, I was like, oh, this is going to be fantastic. And there, and like Reeve said, there's plenty of fantastic aspects of it. The combat, when it's when it's working, it absolutely sings. Like it it is some of the best tuned combat I've played in a while. But I just I struggle with this system so much. And it's not even like Reeve says, it's not even a difficulty thing. I don't mind learning people's movesets. There's just there's like a sense of like nihilism almost that takes over when you're like, okay, I'm in this level, I'm already 35. It, even if I beat it, I'm going to have to do this over again. And that's, that system just doesn't work for me. I think this this game has some of my least favorite parts of a Souls-like and a Rogue-like, right? Where I, and I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting maybe a little bit more uh, linear experience from this. And I was like, oh, this is going to be exactly in my wheelhouse. So that's why I was, I was personally shocked when I went on the timeline on Sunday when review embargo was lifted and people were like, oh, this is game of the year. I was like, I, I just don't get that from this at all. And yeah, it's it's surprising to me too because I, in one level, in one sense, I can get that sentiment because if you spend five minutes or even half an hour with this game, you're probably like, this is amazing. This is like, because the systems are all there. It's just the things layered on top of those systems. The more you spend time with it, that really turned me off. So yeah, I literally, almost, oh, go ahead, Alex. Sorry. I was just going to say, I literally, I got done with that first level, beat the boss. I was like, okay, cool. Like, all right, and then I, I literally spent like five minutes around the hub area looking for a way to de-age because, like, because, you know, like, <laughs> like I said, the the uh, in the preview I did, you start at twenty regardless, right? So it's like, okay, that where's the mechanic that that de-ages me? And folks, there's not one, so it's like, oh, so I, I literally have to do this at the age I'm at. If, and then, yeah, and if you wanted to start the club at level twenty, you literally can't die at all in the first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, which I think it does appeal to certain people, right? People love that, like brutal challenge of like you know i i guarantee you we're gonna see a person in a week or two being like yep beat the game at level 20 like yeah, that's I, dope i was that's gonna awesome. ask is that is that possible can you yeah i bet like, it yeah, is like, it would be it would be a test of skill for sure but yeah, sure. I, would, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody eventually does it yeah and it almost reminds me of like a racing game you know in a racing game there's like a very specific thing that you do where once you're kind of used to a, a certain race or used to the mechanics you can kind of recognize when you're not going to win that race and mm-hmm. you restart the race and you keep playing the race and you might get a minute and you're like, oh, I botched it. Restart. Yep. Yeah. Or like a, like a, I, I, like a racing game or like a skateboarding game. Like yeah, my, no. my run has, has been compromised. So I feel like I'm wasting my time yeah. unless I go back. It almost gives me that similar feeling. Yeah, no, that's a good call. But the difference though is that that race only lasts four minutes, five minutes, depending on how long it is, right? Versus these levels that take without shortcuts, right? Half an hour, 45 minutes. I don't know what the later levels take, right? So it's like, that's why I said like, there's this sense of like nihilism where it's like, 
like I, I know I'm done in this. Like I don't, there's no benefit for me to continue in this level because I can't, it's not like I can bring some of the skill points over either. You know what I mean? And you have to, you have to get a certain amount of XP to permanently unlock something. And it's just, the, those systems just totally turned me off from the experience, which I'm really sad to say. Um, because like I said, coming out of the preview, I was so hyped on this game. So, you know, um, but I know a lot of people love it. And uh, for yeah. the reasons uh, Reeves outlined here, um, are there any other points you want to hit on Ben before we, before we uh, say goodbye to Sifu? I think we did a good job covering the game. It's, okay. you know, my reviews online, if you want to read it and Alex Van Aken did a great job turning it into a video review. If you want to watch the video on YouTube or something. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, and I really wish I could have loved it more for because the the combat's really there. I would say you know if you can play a demo or borrow from a friend or something, like at least check it out, get mm-hmm. your hands on it because it does feel really good. But just be aware of like if you're going to spend money on it, like things set in down the road that might turn you off a little bit. For sure, I'm hoping we get maybe a little lull in April where maybe I can go into it with a little bit more uh, tempered expectations for what it actually is and then you know embrace it for that but man i was was not feeling it when i was playing it on i think saturday night but um yeah it can be a grind which is yeah why i gave it a seven unfortunately yeah so go check out that review um and then we are going to move just straight into the playlist let's keep it going here uh because john carson has been a busy man he's been playing a lot of things um, so, so many MMOs, so many MMOs, which like, I feel like you need six months off of MMOs at some point. Like, yeah, uh, Ben, if you could just like mark it on my calendar to uh, not assign me MMOs for the rest of the year. <laughs> oh, I think, I think well, you'll be good. MMO March. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> oh <no. laughs> yeah. Come on. But, MMOs are a lifestyle, you know, that's true. That's they true. Really now that are. I'm in, I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Well, and the MMO you're into right now. Mm hmm. Lost Ark. You're going to yes. lost in it. Um, I am. Do you want to, uh, you're going to be doing the review for us uh, right, right now. You have an impression piece up, but tell right. us all about it. This is, this is the South Korean MMO ARPG that's gotten a lot of buzz and has finally become stateside, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So Lost Ark uh, is, is a game developed by Smilegate um, and, uh, sorry, published by Smilegate over in, uh, over in Korea. Um, and created by Tripod Studios. It's been brought over uh, to the West by Amazon Games. Um, you may know they them have from, two from MMOs. Screen things as uh, those boxes that are showing up on your doorstep right now. Um, yeah, like the, the last game that Amazon released was uh, New World, which came out uh, last fall. It's another MMO. Um, Lost Ark is very different. It's, it's an action RPG, like Alex mentioned, uh, it's a lot like Diablo in the way that it plays. A lot of point and click. Uh, I know Van Aken's playing it a different way um, with with controller, but um, it was created as a as a, a PC action RPG. Um, you are uh, you you play uh, one of fifteen subclasses. Um, there's there's a there's a lot of, a lot of different characters that you can make in here. Um, and so unlike want- other MMOs, where like they are unlocked at a later level. You like pick at the start. Yeah. Right. I'm going to be one of those subclasses. Yeah. So, so they have you choose. It, it can be kind of confusing at first because you have five different classes that you're actually choosing from and male or female variations of some of them. Uh, each subclass is split between genders. So you can't make, let's say uh, I just made a shadow hunter, which is a, which is an assassin subclass you can only have that be um, a woman. So you mm-hmm. can't uh, do like full customization like you could with other MMOs, which is good and bad. Uh, like I, I get the the whole like. They have a very specifically designed class fantasy um, that they're that they're shooting for. Um, but I think for for some people, they they might want to have the, the option of, of what to choose there. Um, but but like gameplay wise, it plays a lot like Diablo. You have different skills that, that you equip. You can have eight skills at a time. Um, each skill can uh, be leveled up and you can add different perks to them to customize how they work. So you can uh, like reduce their their mana cost or their cooldown or you can add like bleed effects. I mean, kind of really customize your your bag of tools to how you want to play the game. Um, 
I mean, you've you've talked about how it feels like you know the combat is very reminiscent of Diablo. Does it hit mm-hmm. those highs in your in your estimation? Yeah. So, or is it a Diablo? <laughs> it, it does not Diablo. It's uh, it, it's pretty Diab cool. Um, <laughs> nailed got, it. Yes, got him. Uh, yeah, it's it gives you that that power fantasy. Like you are just mowing through enemies. Um, you have. Like all of your skills are pretty powerful, but you, every once in a while you get a skill that will just make enemies explode. <laughs> and it's like Dude. the coolest feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so um, that's the one I usually like reduce the cooldown on or, or yeah. beef up a little bit more um, just to make a bloody mess out of everything. Um, the the big aspect that I really haven't been able to play around with with Lost Ark yet is the MMO aspect. I've been playing on a, on a private server uh, that Amazon provided for reviewers, and uh, it just went into early access uh, yesterday. Yesterday, uh, yeah, as of cool. this recording, uh, for people who are listening to this, it does go completely free to play and live this Friday. Um, but currently you have to pay for a founder's pack to, to play it. Um, Which ranges from $15 to $100, to $100, depending on the cosmetics and stuff that you want. Right, right. And so for that, you're getting pets and different mounts. skins and mounts and uh, cool cosmetic stuff. But cosmetic stuff in this game does sometimes have some some stat boost to them. Mm. Um so I, that's where I could see people kind of souring on this game is that there does seem to be a little bit of a, I, I it might be play to win. I don't know how much this, those stats are going to affect you. Um, pay to the, win or play to win? A pay to win. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure. The, the majority of the game is PVE. Right. We I I assume you haven't seen the PVP, John. I, no. I haven't. I haven't. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I have like during during my my time with the with the um with the private server i only saw two different people um so there wasn't we kind of just like passed by like ships in the night um, so i didn't really have yeah. a, a chance to test out any any social aspects there i imagine an easy way to negate any of those issues is just to like make sure when you're in a pvp mode that um you know cosmetics don't those stat boosts are like nullified during PVP right. events. Cause I, if you look at your gear, um, you can toggle and it'll show you its stats as a PVE item. Mm-hmm. And it'll, it'll then show you its stats as a PVP item. So I imagine mm-hmm. that's what that system is for. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Cause there is, I'm sorry. Oh, oh no, go ahead. I was just going to say that was my worry booting it up last night. I was like, Oh, this seems really cool. I'm into this. And I can talk more about that after John's done, but yeah, I was like, okay, this is free to play. So where is the gotcha going to come in here? Where's like those, those unfun aspects going to come in here. And it yeah. sounds like you haven't seen a ton have, or have you not, not really like a lot of the, the stuff that you're paying for are either cosmetics or like mounts. There is like this, aura effect that you can get with the the founders pack that gives you like 30 days to speed up like cooldowns on things um for like your stronghold i haven't even i haven't been to a stronghold yet so i don't know what that is but it it sounds like cooldown timers for like crafting or for uh different uh different tasks that you can do uh, as opposed to like wholly increasing like your your intellect or your your stamina or or your strength yeah so. i haven't i obviously you've played this game more than any of us mm-hmm. i i imagine the strongholds will be similar to the world of warcraft ones where you are sending out like people on missions to mm-hmm. like bring back resources to help you build up your house or like your your stronghold in this right. case but I, i'm very eager to see that part of the game because that's the kind of hook that could really get me on top of the regular mmo grind which is just mm-hmm very um effective I feel like if i'm also being able to like because i did see like you know you could like unlock like it seemed like furniture or like they call them structures yeah and like statues and stuff yeah i'm like okay yeah. when does animal crossing start in this game because <laughs> that's gonna be bad for me it, yeah. so lost ark does have like a huge collection aspect as well like there's 
uh, a bunch of like little seeds that you can find that like there's a whole list of 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 those that you can collect there's like 1200 of them throughout the world there's a bunch and of you can redeem those for items and other things right yeah so there's there's like if you go to like your collection window there's like eight to ten tabs of like different things in the game that you can like collect to, like giant's hearts or uh pieces of uh stolen masterpieces which are just like paintings that someone had stolen uh, NFTs. There's, yeah nfts exactly <laughs> uh but there there's like eight to ten of these different kinds of collections that all give you new items or mounts or it all it all seems like cosmetic stuff or like health potions or whatever um but it's it's stuff that you can keep track of and do in the world and it seems like that stuff actually carries over from character to character um so i think from the start you can make like six different characters but you can buy additional slots from there and playing those different characters will level up your roster level which is a another experience i think we all bar. know what that is yeah exactly <laughs> it's another it's another experience bar that uh that that gives you stat bo boosts for every character uh yeah. that you play so um this is a cool MMO for MMO impression. players. Yeah. 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 Um, what they, the game starts with, it, it seems to be story heavy at the start, right? You're learning yeah. about this world, what the arcs are, the, the players in this, this game for them. Right. Does that continue uh, as you, as you progress through? Is it, it's, is it pretty story heavy? Yeah. So it's kind of been the, the, the main through line of going from region to region. Um, yeah, you'll go to different villages and you'll kind of keep the same partner character with you, at least from from what I've experienced and kind of learn about their story and their history with like demons and the like they're a priest as well. And uh, you kind of learn more about them as you go. That will also bring you through dungeons in the game, which are going to be like your big set piece moments uh, like you would have in like a World of Warcraft. Those you can do solo or you can group up with people. Um, luckily you could do them solo because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get as far as I did before. Right. Um, but those dungeons also have different difficulty levels that you can select to give yourself uh, better rewards uh, if you're able to complete them on harder difficulties. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I really want to try with people. Um, I want to group up and go through those dungeons or find world bosses. Like I was exploring the, I think they're called the salt plains or the salt flats. And uh, came up against or came up to like this giant monster. I don't know what it was, but it had like this big red aura around it, had like 27 health bars. And I tried taking it out by myself and could not even make a dent. So, yeah, um, I really want to see those social aspects of, of Lost Ark um, and logging in yesterday and today and seeing so many people just like wa wandering around Pride Home uh, is 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 really cool. So um, I've, I'm. I've really liked what I've played of the game so far. It's really scratching that Diablo itch for me, which I feel like is tough. Um, there's been a lot of games like I can never get into like Titan Quest or uh, uh, other action RPGs like Diablo has always been the one for me. And this is the one that's come either the closest or is equal to uh, what I've experienced with like Diablo three. So really riding high on on Lost Ark currently. And uh, if if you really like those action RPGs like it's free to play. It's on PC. Try it out. There's, I mean, you're, you're not going to lose any money to it unless, uh, unless you end up buying some of the, the cosmetics, so. which I will say there was, I was walking around pride home last night before I went to bed and I was like, Oh, there's some really cool looking mounts on the, <laughs> out yeah, here. I, and, and got some pinata. I saw people running around on pinatas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, uh, the three headed dogs and then that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Um, Alex, you you've played what three hours or so so far? Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay. Not a competition, um, dude. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no need to flex. Yeah, I'm gonna play like have... twelve this weekend. <laughs> yeah, for real, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I've only played three hours, but I've made it to the second zone. Um, yeah, it's really scratching the MMO itch that I've been trying to to find satisfaction for for the last couple of years because yeah. I kind of have. Uh, Left WoW behind a little bit for now. Uh, FF14 doesn't really do it for me. And I really enjoyed New World for a little while. But again, that is just 
yeah, I don't know. This one seems like very promising and kind of, I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it, um, but I very much am. And I'm like itching to keep playing. It's, it's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. And the world is huge. I don't know if you've yeah. like zoomed out from like even the continent you're on. There's like, there's handfuls of continents in each of the, it's yeah. massive. Uh, so I'm excited to see all of that. I have not done that because I can't figure out how to do it with the damn controller. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what if what if you learn mouse and keyboard on this game? I try. What so if, what, I if tr- what if that's it? I I was thinking about that last night. So my my draw to this game is the Diablo side of it, not the not as much the MMO side. Even though there's there, I've I've dabbled in some in in my past. Right. Um, the last MMO I gave any time to was the Old Republic back when it first came out, and that maybe maxed out at five hours. So I'm very much a a noob in in that sense. But the combat, man, that's thing that it, that sings like it. It feels has some so weight good. to it. It's, yeah. yeah, it feels it feels awesome. As someone who just can't get enough AOE uh, damage in my life, this game is like this is for you a hundred percent. But it what, is what class sorry, are you? I am a a. Um, was it the Deathbringer uh, assassin? Right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Right. Um, and because I was gonna go more like tanky, but then Alex said he's going like berserker, so I was like, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna try something else here. So, um, and, and in that area, it absolutely has been fantastic. Um, just in the prologue, um, it is something I'm thinking about while we're sitting here. You know what I mean? And like wanting to play. Uh, it is overwhelming to start for a non MMO player. Mm. There's like two or three different types of currencies. There's a ton of storefronts. There's so many menus. My recommendation, just ignore all of that. (laughs) Well, that's, that's what I've kind of been doing. Like in the start, right. I was like, I don't know what these all mean. I'm just going to go and and blow up like fields of, of orcs and trolls right now. and, And that feels good. So I think if you just follow the, the main quest line, you'll you'll be fine like it'll it'll lead you through everything that you need it'll teach you the the different boxes that you need to click on and and what's in a month you'll be like oh i'm out of this currency i need that where are my feathers at i need to craft some stuff (laughs) yo where the feathers at that's Um, the you'll slowly learn like one thing at a time you're like oh that's what that's for okay yeah. yeah for sure and i and i do think to that point i'm feeling overwhelmed but not um uh i'm undeterred to keep playing and learning it right yeah. because that that those gameplay hooks are so strong in in my mind um it's not it's it hasn't been a uh, a bad thing yet if it yeah. continues that way and i'm just like i don't get what's going on then, then then that may hurt it but for now it's like oh this is that this is that, really good that has to be a rough thing to balance for amazon games to to localize this game and bring it over but also it's a game that's been out for four years. There's four years of content that's been tacked onto it. So where, where is that new player experience? How do you onboard people? Mm-hmm. Um, like myself, I'm, I'm kind of an MMO, uh, not expert, but veteran at this point. I've played World of Warcraft for 16 years or whatever, and uh, just played a bunch of Final Fantasy XIV. Um, so like, there's a lot of things that I've kind of grasped, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of menus that I'll keep going into. We didn't even mention the the whole card system. There's cards that you can collect oh, and God. build a deck, and that will uh, give you different uh, set bonuses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so so many layers to this game that I I think if you're really into uh, like a customizable experience, if you're into min maxing all of your your stats, there's like it's gonna take a while to actually figure out what like the best builds are for things to toy around with stuff. I could see people losing hours and weeks and, and months uh, right now to, to this game. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you uh, already have. I already have. Yeah. yeah he's I, I want him back. Where, where's that Sifu thing where I can go back to when I was 34. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, John, and, uh, John, you're 67 years old now. Oh no. You're very strong. Though. My bones. <laughs> now get ready to get punched, old man. No, no. And your body just shattered. The future is now. That's one thing old people are constantly saying. My bones. <laughs> my bones. <laughs> I can't play Fortnite my anymore. Tapioca. Because of my bones. <laughs> uh, Reeves, I know you're one of the bigger Diablo fans uh, in in the office. I don't know where your love is for MMOs, but where does this does this sound interesting to you? Yeah, I'm not a huge MMO player. I did play some Warcraft back in the day, and I dabbled in Old Republic, kind of like you, 
Alex. My thing with MMOs is like, I just can't be committed <laughs> to mm-hmm. one video game for that long. Yeah. And MMOs require a ton of commitment. So that's what my problem is. I guess I'm a commitment phobe, but. But there's no this, monthly payment. Yeah, I mean, that is helpful. It, that, so that what, would encourage me a little bit. I am curious about this because I do like Diablo and Diablo style games. So I, I want to check this out for sure. I, I think it's viable as a solo experience. Um, like you do get the loot grind. You are you are constantly getting new new items to make the numbers go bigger. Um, and you're constantly leveling up and uh, leveling up your skills and, and all of that. So I, I think it does work if you do want to play it solo. Um, if yeah. you don't even want to touch the the uh, social aspects of it, I don't think you have to, uh, at least from what I've experienced. I don't know what what like near end game is looking like, but mm-hmm. I mean, you could solo all of the dungeons that I've played so far. So for sure, I, yeah. I think th- the last point I want to make is we we touched on the controller support, which is there. It supports Xbox controllers natively. Um, it is overwhelming in, in that, too, because everything your basic attack is X, right? But the, anytime you want to use something special, it's either left trigger and the face buttons or, or uh, left bumper, bumper and the, and the, mm. the face um, buttons. And then also like to select things in the map, it's you click the left three or the, the left stick. So that is definitely weird. Um, like the gents here said, it may encourage you to try mouse and keyboard for the first time, but I like, I like, when I land those attacks, I like how they feel. So I'm still undecided. But no, if you're like a console player like I am and you're interested in this, there is a learning curve in that way that I'm I'm nowhere near getting quite yet. I, at this point, I would recommend controller for combat and mm-hmm. just have like having a mouse and keyboard available to yeah. like go and mess with your character and like mm-hmm. or like, you know, just click on things in the menus um because it kind of does the simulated cursor thing where your right stick is a mouse cursor yeah so Mm -hmm. and i I definitely yeah i need to speed that up in my my settings and stuff and there are settings to to help with that depending on the speed and stuff that you want but i haven't decided what i'm doing yet but it's not like i said not enough to deter me from stop playing to stop I, i i will say for mouse and keyboard users too like i'm so used to using my my number row as all mm. of my skills and it uses like your q w a s d like all, all of those keys for your skills so i'm i'm adapting to moving my hand down and using all of those but that might help you if you want to play like mobas because a lot of those key bindings oh. are are on those keys so interesting that's yeah. that's how i'm training my brain now and 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 learning from this you're a wise man has anyone ever yeah. told you that no no, it's not true. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, John, your impressions are up on the site right yes. now. Yeah. It sounds like we have a ton more content coming for Lost Ark between video and um, and written. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'm sure Tack will want to talk about uh, his time with it as well. Oh, hell um, yeah. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for all of that. So, uh, gents, we're going to take a quick breather and then we're going to get into listener questions. Let's do it. I got to give my bones a rest. Welcome back to the Game Informer show. Uh, Of course, we are about to get into our listener emails, but we're going to go through some housekeeping real quick. Every housekeeping, we start off with a new listener review. If you are kind enough to go and take five minutes out of your day to leave us a review, we want to read it and say thank you. Uh, Of course, we encourage honest reviews, uh, but as well, we do like positive ones. But hey, even if it's not positive, at least be constructive. Um, This week's review comes, it's a five star by Jose. Jose says, I've listened to the show since 2014 uh, and have both loved and hated transitions from one host to another because change is hard, but all brought their own sensibilities and personalities to the show and discussions. Uh, This latest iteration is phenomenal. Uh, I particularly love the enthusiasm for Alex Stadnick uh, and the enthusiasm he brings to coverage, and I aspire to love my work as much as he clearly loves his. The traditional GI staff are also great. And I particularly want to call out Kim, Jill, Marcus, Reeves, and Tack for what they bring to the show from week to week, which is not to say anything bad about the other guests, as this is just my subjective list. No, a lot I get of it. favorites here, Jose. This is the it. most Midwest uh, review, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Finally, I have to say that I loved and greatly respected how the latest episode discussed the Activision Blizzard acquisition um, and reported on uh, abusive and toxic culture reported at, at the company instead of leaving it as an afterthought. Um, and yeah that's pretty much the review thank you jose we appreciate that five-star review uh immensely 
Uh, and thank you to everybody who leaves reviews or ratings over on Spotify. Again, it helps us out a lot, and we can't say thank you enough. Uh, weekly streams this week. We've got Game Informer Live on Thursday. I think we're figuring out the game still. I would suspect Sifu or maybe Lost Ark. Who knows? Regardless, 2 p.m. Central every Thursday, we're playing video games. We will see you there. Twitch.tv slash Game Informer. Uh, we've got uh, streams on Friday, you know, Super Replay. L- John's going to be streaming Lost Ark all, all weekend. weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four-hour block each day. Time to be determined, but make sure you have those uh, follow notifications on Twitch yeah. and you'll see when, you know, he goes live. And maybe Me. some friends will be there as well. Maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe he won't be what, alone. What will be there are some sweet item drops. For oh, Lost some Ark. droops. Oh, some, some droops. We've got oh, okay. some droopies. Are there any There's mounts? Kids. I don't know. Oh, okay. You'll have to watch and find out. Huh. I plan to. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I get, will. Get in the chat. Well, there goes my weekend plans. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah be there for all those streams twitch.tv slash game informer of course we got multiplayer mondays at 9 a.m central most mondays that's like the one that's more of a flexible spot but uh when we can make those happen we love to make them happen on monday mornings uh and then head over to youtube got of course all that Elden ring gameplay that we showed off the past few weeks a lot of coverage over there see for review we've got ngts for destiny and ghostwire tokyo all sorts of cool videos coming out over there uh, youtube.com slash game informer uh, if you want to follow the crew here today on twitter on instagram i don't know where they're at on social media in general uh you can follow them alex stadnick is at studnick 76 uh ben reeves is at benjamin reeves uh john is at john underscore carson and i'm at it's van aiken uh and then lastly we got i promise the last thing then we're gonna get to questions uh we've got a bunch of podcasts you can listen to Video Gameography uh, is Mr. Ben Reeves and Marcus Stewart's show. Uh, you just announced the newest season, right? Yeah, last week we announced we just went through Metroid and Halo. So we're giving Sony some love and doing Uncharted, Ooh. one of my personal favorite franchises. So I'm really excited. This coming Saturday, Matt Helgeson, ex Game Informer editor, hey. host of uh, Mintrax. Or wait, mm-hmm. that's not what they call it now, is it? uh what do they call it crossfade it's the crossfade podcast over at min max uh he is joining us to talk about the first uncharted game which he reviewed for game informer back in the day it's fun discussion so come on by awesome uh and of course our weekly nintendo show all things nintendo hosted by brian shea check those out on fridays uh and then our new comic book podcast from panel to podcast hosted by uh reiner um you can check that out on wednesdays Tuesdays. 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 I, I, that's yeah. the new one, and I've should, I'm should sorry. really lined that up with comic book release day. It should have been lined up with comic. Yeah, I guess it's he's a DC fan. Oh, okay. yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, mm. when you can get uh, DC comics, come on, boy. But yeah, go check that show out. I actually haven't gotten to check it out yet, so I'm very excited too. It's been a busy two weeks at Game Informer. <laughs> it's gonna keep getting busier, my guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Alex, let's go and get into uh, listener emails. Let's get busy, shall we? This. One of the best parts of the show. This is where you, the humble listener, can write in and uh, tell us what you want us to talk about, right? Hopes, dreams, uh, movies, uh, food. We talked about, you know, uh, curbing our depression from the <laughs> pandemic uh, a couple of weeks ago. That was a good one. Um, so just send send some stuff in. We, we love to hear from you. So uh, and you can do that uh, by emailing us at podcast at or you can post in our lovely discord, which Alex Van Aken how the heck do you get into that? Uh, if you subscribe to us on Twitch just one time, that'll get you access. Just go into uh, your Discord app and make sure your Twitch is linked in your integrations. Uh, and then once you do that and you subscribe to our channel one time, uh, our Discord uh, will show up. Also, look at my new tattoo, dude. That's just coming up casually. Ooh, it looks so good. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Sorry, I was distracted. I was distracted by my vanity. Uh, but yeah, just subscribe to us on Twitch and you'll get access to the Discord. And it's a great time. So I encourage everybody to do that. There you go. It is a, You could ask Alex Van Aken uh, about his tattoo if you wanted to. Yeah. 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 Also, I always think you're grabbing a beer when you're drinking your, your bubbly water here. It's sparkling water. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> for, the, for the audio listeners. Clean um, beer. Yeah. <laughs> Clean beer. Let's get into it, shall we? Uh, another fantastic crop from the, from the GI crew. This one comes from one mean Leafion machine over on Discord. And Leaf says, Sup, GI fam. All caps. 
uh, with the Oscar nominations being revealed and the Uncharted movie is finally releasing next week. What is your favorite video game movie? Uh, that's part one of the question. Part two is, do you think a movie based off of a video game will ever win, let alone be nominated for Best Picture? And then he says, if <laughs> if so, why will it be Sonic the Hedgehog 2 or the Super Mario Brothers movie? Mm. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of questions, a lot of interesting uh, things there. But let's start with the first part of this. Um, what is y'all's favorite video game movie? Uh, do we have one? I, 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 I don't think any video game movies are good, but I have two favorites. Okay. I think the Warcraft movie is really entertaining and really fun. I still haven't seen it. I haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. If you like Warcraft at all, I... I love it that. is like go into it knowing it's a video game movie. I really enjoyed my time. I, it was I watched it on a plane somewhere, maybe with the PAX on the way right. to PAX. Well, East Alex, I like the idea of somebody at, in this company going in, not know, like trying to think like, oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was the oh, Mortal Kombat is probably my favorite one. That the, one? Old, old one. Old one. OK, gotcha. I, I do like the new one, but the old one is just. The King, I think. Yeah, that's probably my answer. I I do like the new one as well, but the old one's probably still the best video game movie. I'm trying to rack my ba- brain thinking of something that would be better. Some people cite Wreck-It Ralph. I don't know if I count that as a real video game movie. No. It's inspired by it. I do love that movie, but yeah. Yeah, it's a great, great movie. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. yeah. It's not an adaptation. Wait, there no. was a Max Payne movie? Yeah, yeah, it was with yeah, there Wahlberg. Was. Wahlberg. Yeah. That sounds oh, awful. Big yikes. There's, yeah. There's Hitman movies. Nope. Uh, I mean, it's uh, for me, it's Mortal Kombat. It's the original Mortal Kombat like that, mm. like a lot of it's nostalgia for me. But like having watched it back uh, every other year or so, it's it holds up. Uh, I think it's it's well written. Uh, the action's cool. Uh, a lot of the practical effects hold up like with Goro, I think looks yeah. just campy enough. Um, and and having like practical effects for him is, is neat. Um, and making a likable Johnny Cage. Um, I don't think we would have the Johnny Cage we have in the games now, if not for that version of him uh, in in that original movie. For sure. Um, yeah, I just to answer his other question is like, it's hard for me to imagine a future where the Oscars nominate a video game movie for Best Picture. I don't know that. What, that what's, be an what's, the, of ours. what's the Oscar bait uh, movie? That's the other thing. It's like, it's like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, the the games that get turned into movies are generally big franchises that are big blockbuster reaction things, and mm-hmm. those don't tend to be best picture winners. Yeah, I I'm I'm looking at Wikipedia, which of course is the you know defining list of upcoming video game movies. There's a couple I think that could do something. Mortal Kombat Particular, Annihilation. Uh, there's an untitled Yakuza game. Maybe that could do something cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's gonna win an Oscar though. Cool. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Well, look at video. I wanted you to keep going down that list. Metal Gear Solid, Sonic the Hedgehog two. I don't know a Minecraft movie. Yeah. Well, Uh, look at comic book movies. Like we've had good adaptations of comic book movies, but it's still really hard for that to get nominated for Best Picture. When they do, it's something like The Joker, which like like that's the one that gets nominated for Best Picture. It's like a remake of The King of Comedy. Like it's it's (laughs) it's tangentially uh, a joker movie but it's also a huge homage to uh, a previous award-winning movie right yeah there was a I lot believe- of buzz about spider-man no way home petitioning for the oscars this year and it didn't happen and it's like it didn't totally surprise me even though it's maybe my favorite movie of the year it didn't mm-hmm. surprise me because that's not really oscar bait you know yeah. you no. know it's oscar it's bait film. batman but well so dark mr robert pattinson all three yeah. hours of him there is there is a chance here. I don't know how far off we want to get on the, the question, but the the Academy did expand their I'm a huge Oscars nerd, which is I, I know a lot of people aren't. But the when the Dark Knight didn't get Best Picture nominated, but Heath Ledger mm-hmm. won for uh, Dark Knight, the the expansion of the Best uh, Picture category was in direct correlation with that. And then um, Black Panther was the beneficiary of that. I think that's one of the only comic book movies to receive best picture nomination it's end so. game well joker no. got nominated as oh, well. oh and then joker right. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. which and then joaquin won for yeah. for that ridiculous so, um yeah i do think in the guise of the oscars right I, I feel like especially now with what the nominations were this year 
I feel like they are very much they're trying to be like criterion where it's like they're curating this list of movies that they think are impactful as they're expanding the the academy now. I think we need we still need a if uh, if you're a video game movie fan, right? We still need a moment like we had with like Iron Man or the Avengers, right, where it penetrated into this mainstream zeitgeist more than ever, right? And we said, "Oh, video game movies can be great." But even then it's like most of those movies get tech Oscar noms, right? Which is still great. Like the people who, you know, do the the virtual or the the VFX and the sound and stuff for those movies are are geniuses in their in their fields. So I think that's like how you start and then you start to get more and more respect and stuff like that. But well, this even goes back to an old argument that we've had for a long time. It's like, should we care? Because comic books, it's not a fair comparison because comic books are primarily a storytelling medium. So it makes sense to transition to film. It's another storytelling medium. Mm-hmm. And video games can tell stories. I don't think of them as primarily a storytelling medium. It's more of like an experiential thing. It's a yeah. mix of, you know, stories and art and sport and play. It's this mm-hmm. weird thing. So turning it into a movie kind of like takes away some of the best parts of a game in mm-hmm. my mind. So eh, I don't know if we should care that strongly about like, I, I guess what I'm getting at is I feel like there's this push sometimes when the people ask that question, there's this like, will we get this as like a legitimate legitimizing yes. of our yeah. favorite medium video mm-hmm. games. And I just don't think we should care that much about that. Yeah, I feel like the culture, games are great because they're great. Yeah, I feel like the culture is still so fo- honed in on the great Roger Ebert misspeak or not misspeaking. He, would, I think he was wrong in this, but he's like video games aren't art, you know. And I think yeah. a lot of people still hone in on that mindset, right? And and like Reeves said, how do we legitimize this in the in the guise of the critic who thinks it's still about you know scantily clad women and violence you know what i mean games offer so much more than that than they did back in the day and i actually think this is the wrong award ceremony to to target with this even though i do love talking about the oscars uh yeah. i think emmys are one to look at because i do think we're going to get more quality video game adaptations out of tv than we are film at least in the near future yeah um, long form is is a better fit for that um, yes because like the last of us could easily be especially with the HBO money, right? Last of Us, we could be talking about the Emmy-winning show Last of Us, right? You know, there's some some anime projects coming from Netflix that are, that could be very interesting in, in that way too, right? So yeah. they're, I think they have a much longer way to go in the film scene than they do in the TV space, so. I'm still waiting for a good uh, game adaptation of a movie, so. <laughs> yeah. Hey. When are we going to get that, boys? When the X-Men, hey, Riddick? Uh, Origins Riddick? Just Riddick? Uh, uh, Riddick was a... Kind of, kind of an adaptation. So the, was that, that the Warcraft under... themes are a really good spinoff of the Warcraft movie, actually. Oh, hey. <laughs> there you I go. Should, yeah. I probably oh, you know, when I watched that, I didn't even realize it was a video game movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, also, uh, shout out to uh, those OG Tomb Raider movies because I haven't watched them in a long time, but I did love them as a kid. So. I feel like we should give some love to the OG Resident Evil movies. I've yeah. never seen them, so I can't. Oh, I like yeah. the first one. Yeah, the first one. Blake wow. unironically loves those movies. Oh, yeah. 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 We know. So, we've, we've seen it in Slack. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Good question, Leaf. Uh, moving on to uh, she, Shifu Ju uh, says, uh, let's be honest. We all f- fall prey to hype. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, what game was your biggest disappointment and what game most exceeded even your loftiest uh, expectations? I can start with what disappointed me, and I don't know why. I think partially because I was reading Game Informer. Uh, mm. I was so in on Two Human. You remember that game? Oh, so wow. in on oh, Two yeah. Human. I was like, yeah. this is going to be the GOAT. This is going to be amazing. And I probably got through like <laughs> four hours of that game when I finally played it. That game was cheeks. Bad. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I was- <laughs> I, yeah. I was on that. I was listening to too many one up podcasts at that time when they had like Dennis Dyack come on mm-hmm. uh, onto one up yours. And yeah. yeah, like super hyped it up. And and the the editors who were were playing it there then, too, were also like, oh, yeah, it's really cool. And then it came out and just it was it was those controls, like those controls were just did not make sense for for that game because y'all did a Ben, y'all did a cover story for that, right? Did we? 
I think I remember a GI cover of two. Yeah, that's could possible. Be wrong. Yeah, it I'm pretty sure I remember out. that too. Actually, yeah, it came out around the same time, or I remember it got announced around the same time as Mass Effect, the mm-hmm. first one. Yeah, and so there was this idea of like, here's these two amazing. And so I think it kind of was coasting off of Mass Effect's wake a little bit because everybody was excited about Mass Effect, and people were like, here's this other game that's like not exactly the same, but it's like similar in scope and ambition. Mm-hmm. And then I, I think. I remember in the office pre Mass Effect releasing, I think we all understood that Mass Effect was going to be something. And, you know, I don't know what we wrote about <laughs> Two Human, but I think we all understood that Two Human wasn't going to be great. <laughs> yeah. So that one didn't surprise me as much. Reiner's mm-hmm. review um, lead sentence said, Imagine what could have been. Oh, that oh was no. a lead in for, for his Two Human review 6.75. Yikes. Wow. Woof. Yeah. Woof, woof, woof. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Any any uh, things that killed the hype? In the recent memory, game? Biomutant. Mm. Oh, Ooh. that's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. And that was we, one I wasn't even excited for until... Yeah. Until Marcus. Yeah. 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 Until yeah, yeah, we'll knock some, We'll get it going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was so excited, and I was so excited. The, I remember the in, Cork the, saw it several times, like, for four years in a row. He was like, this game looks great. We should do yeah. something on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a massive disappointment. That was, I I enjoy like some bad games. That game, well, I didn't review it, so I don't know what we gave it. Uh, it would have been low for me because mm. that was the whole childhood flashback scene in that game. I was like, I'm never touching this again. And that was like an hour or two in. I was like, this is awful. I don't know what you're um, referencing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably best when he's like a little, little, little baby boy. He's doing kung fu in his dies. dojo. Yeah, spoilers. It's just poorly done. Yeah. It's rough. You also don't seem to like flashbacks. It seems. Oh, I hate. Yeah, dying like two as flashbacks. Yeah. I hate them. Oh, I think I just rough. don't like video game children. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, no, that's or children in general. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. What about flash mm-hmm. bulbs mm-hmm. or flash mobs? Hurts my. I do eyes. like oh, flash. That really mobs. hurts my eyes. No, I've always flashes. wanted to participate in one. <laughs> Mm, hot flashes yeah Yeah. the one i was gonna bring up was spore which i was super excited for that one it's it seemed like the perfect pitch concept it's like hey the guy who created sim sim city the guy who created the sims these two mega franchises that are beloved by millions he's gonna create a third franchise that'll be beloved by millions right (laughs) and it just conceptually it sounds amazing you follow this amoeba as it grows and becomes a civilization and then takes to the stars but then the game came out and it's not a terrible game but it's really just a collection of i don't know uh, character creators slash yeah. thing creators yeah. and it's mm-hmm. just yeah unfortunately the gameplay was was boring outside of that yeah so that was a disappointment that is that is one of my favorite replay episodes we've done is the spore episode that one was a lot of fun um but yeah i i i get your point 100 percent uh john how about you uh, for once that disappointed me, I mean, the, the easy one to go to is cyberpunk, mm. um, just, mm-hmm. I, that, that was more, um, performance wise, I guess. And a lot of those issues I couldn't really get past and wanted to wait until, uh, those were fixed before I jumped back in and. I, I still have still waiting. Still, yeah, still waiting on it. It's been over a year. Isn't that wild? Mm-hmm. I, I really thought we'd hear something by now. You know, I almost installed Cyberpunk two nights ago on Steam. I was looking. I was looking for what I wanted to play. I was like, huh, maybe it's time. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. The what other story, hit, the other hit the same year, um, which I so big, big Warcraft fan, uh, love World of Warcraft, played it for over a decade whatever um never really got into warcraft 3 loved warcraft 2 played the crap out of it like that was my first blizzard game um yeah. never really got into warcraft 3 so i was waiting for <laughs> reforged to come out um and and have a good modern way to experience that story and you're still uh, waiting that, still waiting on that one too but like seeing what vicarious visions did with diablo 2 um i'm hoping maybe they'll they'll take another crack at it and uh and give us a a diablo th- or not a diablo 3 hey give us a diablo 3 worth playing sure yeah. uh give us a warcraft 3 worth playing yeah. um game that uh exceeded my expectations though mm. um 
probably Mortal Kombat 11. Mm. Um, I'm a big uh, MK lore nerd, um, so there's a lot that it plays around with, um, with the different time streams and realities and there's some weird payoffs uh near the end of that story mode that i was that i popped so hard for um yeah it's it's everything that i could have wanted from a story mode in a, in a fighting game um and it was a, a great wrap up to the, the mortal Kombat story that's been happening since uh the original so yeah cool okay. reeves do you have a do you have one that uh exceeded your expectations i don't know if i have one Right off the bat, I, I remember just recently, Nobody Saves the World. Have you guys even talked about that much on the podcast? It's a so great we, game. We did. We did a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. It not that I had high expectations going in, but I really like Guacamole, which was one of their previous yeah. games. Yeah, so I was so like, oh, whatever these guys do next, I, I'd be in. And I was like, OK, it's kind of look Zelda look at thing. But it completely absorbed me until I was yeah. done with the game. I basically 100 percented it it was the quickest 20 hours wow. <laughs> that i've, that I've yeah. played in like a year if you have game pass definitely check this thing out because it is it's my game of the year so far <laughs> not that oh that wow says a ton, yeah. but it, yeah. i really like it uh just you can play a bunch of different characters you can turn into a horse and plays a horse or a mermaid or a knight you know there's oh, man. Yeah. so cool how many different characters and how they change up the action depending on what character you are so can't say enough good things about that game definitely check yeah. it out that's a good call out because you were the one who who alerted us to that game way back last year and so i'm yeah. happy that it that it paid off uh in and, that way and that's the thing i did the demo and i was like okay this looks neat but i wasn't like expecting much other than i like that team so mm -hmm. i was i was glad to hear that it was good and then when i played it i was like oh i really like yeah. this yeah once awesome. you start getting into that loop of of rewards and getting new forms and messing around with their abilities, like there's just so much to to play around with. Yeah. If so April fun. stays stays uh relatively quiet, I'm I'm going back to that game because I'm I, I I loved it um in the time I played it. So uh Alex, how about you? Anything that exceeded your lofty expectations? Yeah, I hate to beat the same old drum. Uh World of Warcraft as yeah. a kid. That mm -hmm. was back when like I would uh, I had a very slow machine at home, very slow computer, hmm. and it would take literal when I when I first installed City of Heroes, it, it would be like an overnight download. And I World of Warcraft was, was the same. Like I went and got the game ready to play it, and the install took all night. Yep. And I had to go to school the next day. So like I'm like flipping through the like I memorized every page on the manual and like yeah. the classes, the races. I'm like I'm going to be a night elf hunter or a druid or, and you're just like going through like your mind is just melting at the possibilities. Uh, especially as a kid, like yeah. everything's so cool as a kid, like, but yeah, even no, as an adult, I think I would be very hype on that game. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like just blew away all my expectations. I think city of heroes did the same thing, which is another, uh, MMO from a couple years prior to wow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that game also was a similar thing where, prying through every page you're just expecting uh, a certain kind of multiplayer game and as somebody who had never played an mmo before that game you know it just blew me out of the water um so that, those are probably the two that come to mind the most cool yeah for me i'll be quick uh recent example halo infinite didn't know what we were going to get from that game found out that it's some of the best multiplayer in the series history uh needs to keep growing definitely i think there's some fatigue there with, you know, the same maps and stuff. And I want to know what's coming down the pipe. But um, in terms of moment to moment movement and uh, exploring Zeta Halo, absolutely. You know, that was my game of the year last year and I was blown away by it. Um, old example, Mass Effect 2. My buddies and I were so hyped for it. But yeah. the suicide mission uh, produced something that I wasn't even expecting in that way. And the, the impact of that is just is, I mean... There's a reason it's one of the best moments in games, but I, uh, even being a big Mass Effect fan back in the day when that mission hit, it was just, it was on another level. So, um, last one, and we'll say goodbye. This one is from Biscuits with Davey over on Discord. Davey says, good news, Game Informer. Oh, excuse me. Good news. Game Informer has enough money to buy one AAA or smaller indie developer to create any new game or game under their IPs. Which developer would you all agree to buy? So we have to agree on it as a group mm. here. Can we just so. take the money, like buy a really small studio and pocket the rest? <laughs> I That'd like that nice. idea. Yeah. Yeah. We could 
Yeah, I, uh, I like that idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, just how, thinking now. Yeah. How much money do we have? Like, it, it's one one studio, right? It says one AAA studio or one mm-hmm. small. Buy, I'm guessing like we've got like a couple let's, million. Let's just buy Riot. A milli, a milli, Wait, a mi- so oh, buy Riot? Yeah. 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 Could, could we buy a studio that's owned by somebody else? Could we buy like Insomniac or is that... That's, does it have to be an sure. independent? It just says one AAA or smaller indie developer. So yeah, I think I think the checkbook's open That's and everyone's saying gap. we want that yeah. game and former money, baby. Shower it on us. We're open for business. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I was initially thinking it had to be like independently owned. Yeah. Which, uh, ben Hansen of MinMax tweeted something similar out, and I saw a bunch of people responding to him with Capcom. Like, what's the best tri- mm. independent studio yeah. that you get? And people were like, Capcom is like. That's independent studio That's these a days? publisher. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Kind yeah. of blew my mind that people were saying that. Anyway, mm-hmm. I digress. I would say I would petition uh that maybe Supergiant. Oh, guys yeah. behind Super Hades, Giant. Pyre, Bastion. Mm-hmm. I think they're I was this is back bef- when I was thinking like, oh, this would be this should be an independent company. But if checkbooks open, we can buy anybody, maybe Naughty Dog. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we can finally release factions too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I like Super Giant. Super Giant's good. Here's I, my here's my pitch. Here's my pitch. And I've thought about this. I I want to buy Sucker Punch. And I want to buy them to make an Avatar the Last ben- Airbender video game. Ooh. Okay. Just because you like Ghost of Tsushima so much? I think they've shown that they have the knack and ability like to make knack, a game. They don't own that studio, IP. No, they didn't. <laughs> you both jumped on that. Um, here's why. No, I want, I want a game where you, um, you pick which nation you start as, as the Avatar, right? Are there more than one nation? Is it an MMO? Or oh, Avatar the, the Last yeah. Airbender. I'm yeah, no, no, no. Get your Jimmy Cameron stuff out of here. I'm like, I why do. would you want to make an Avatar game? <laughs> Ubi's already got Ubi's that. Awesome. I don't need that in my life. Yeah. Okay. Life. Avatar the Last yeah. Airbender. I'm here. Gotcha. With you. I'm yeah. I'm here. Same page. Because they showed off their their ability with ghosts, right, to excel at the different stances, right? And that's what as the Avatar as you grow, you would you would learn and develop those different stances of rock, water, air, and um fire. Right, so that I could be really interesting. Show. Oh, it's have you not watched the Airbender? Oh, dude, you should watch that. It's you real would good. love it. That's it's that's really going to be your good. next tattoo on your other arm, guaranteed. Uh, um, yeah, you'll you'll have Appa on there. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, I do. Yep, yep. I do like that idea a lot, Alex, because it does feel like a good combo of what they shown they can do with Ghost, but then also it brings in some of the stuff they did in Infamous as well yes. with super rare stuff. So mm-hmm. it's a good pitch for a game. That's what I'm saying. And then you get Ghost of Tsushima 2, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeesh. Yeah. So I also like Super Giant. I think that would be good. Um, Do we have another? What what about a drink box? What what about? They don't miss. They don't. I mean, they're great at platformers. They're great at action games. They're great at Metroidvanias. If you're looking for a solid indie style hit, I think that's a a good place to go. But I think I... Do you like Super Giant quite a bit with with Hades, Transistor, Bastion? It's a great pedigree. Um, pretty little upkeep. I think that team's pretty tight. Um, you wouldn't have and, to do anything. Just like, hey, go keep. Yeah, working. Greg, Greg, you're in charge. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, make us money. Yeah, I'd say thank you. Well, I guess y'all don't like making money. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> well, the, we'll the only thing is, I I almost don't want to see Super Giant be owned by anybody. I'd almost be happier if they were. Independent. Oh, sure. <laughs> Especially us, man. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. Some days. So, Should like we that. just buy Valve and that way we own Steam? I was going to be watching the money rolling. That is so. I was literally yeah. waiting for a breaking conversation to say Valve. <laughs> Hey, I mean, if we and want to make some serious, finally money. force them to make a Half Life and Portal yeah. and all our favorite games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Orange Box Three presented by Game Informer. I could, I could get behind that. Orange, but wait, we skipped Orange Box Two. Never mind. Hey, whatever. Uh, I'm yeah, we own it. We can do it. Yeah. Oh, so what new, new, uh, not team new fight Dota. Tactics. New, new team, <laughs> new team fortress, fortress tactics. Yeah. So. Dota new. Three, Portal Three, uh, Portal Three, Half Life, th- Alex Two. Uh, what <laughs> they should three. do is. They make another orange box and it should just be like four new games, new properties or, oh, or sequels cool. to yeah. something else, you know? That'd be really neat. You Maybe know what? They, they for th- Dead in there or something. Yeah. Or they throw in the Valley of the Gods. We could make that game. We could do it. We can oh force them to do it, dude. Firewatch 2. Firewatch 2. You know? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you call it the blue box or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. well, there you go. Oh, box. 
I've got Blue Box thinking about this. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, gonna make... <laughs> We're on one today, folks. Yeah. As we These always guys are. are saying what's in my brain. Yeah. So We're I think connected. Valve is the play here. I think Valve, I think we did it. Seems and then when, when we have Valve money, then we can just grab Supergiant, you know. That's right. Yeah. And then we just buy all the other ones that we listed. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. we then we monopolize. Yeah. Consolidation. We get, we get Fun real games. We're Steam aiming for the metaverse. Yeah. Oh God, John, <laughs> go away. <laughs> I think I think we're all gonna go away. Uh, this has been episode f- five ninety of the Game Informer Show. We're ten away from six hundred. That's nuts. Um, so thank you for sending your questions. Thank you for listening to us. Any and all support that you give us is very appreciated. Whether you 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 know just listen on YouTube or you you do give us a subscription or, or a review, we appreciate all of it. So thank you. Be good to one another, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Yeah.